My name's Tim Breyer. I'm with National Seed. We're based in uh, Lyle, so right in the Chicagoland area. Um, what I thought is I'd hand out a couple handouts. We'll go through these, and then if you have any questions after, we can answer those. So um, starting off, we're going to go with the fertilizer schedule. It's basically pretty easy in the sense that you want to kind of follow the holidays. So right now is a good time to put down like your um, crabgrass control, which is this one right here. Um, the only, like any product, there's always a pro and a con. With this product, you can't really seed at the same time. So you have to decide on whether you want to do your crabgrass control or you would use a starter fertilizer and then go ahead and seed those berry areas that you might have in your lawn. So again, this is the first one that you'd start out with is your crabgrass control. Um, your next one, which would be like around Memorial Day, which is your weed and feed. And with this product, you want to make sure that it's um, applied when it's a little wet in the morning, maybe like after rain or like a heavy dew morning. Um, the problem with this is that let's say you put it down and it rains like an hour later, it's going to kind of make it a little bit more ineffective. So you want to make sure that you can kind of watch the forecast to see that it's not going to rain right after you apply it. And you want to make sure that the plant's a little wet. The reason being is you want this to stick to the weed and to kill it. Okay. And then uh, around July 4th, you're going to do... Excuse me, if you know, it doesn't rain, you could water it, right? You could water the lawn too before you apply it, yeah. What you don't want to do is you don't want to apply it and then water your lawn after because then you're going to dilute the weed killer that's in this bag. So you can water your lawn before that, then go ahead and apply it. But after this is applied, you want it to stay dry for about 24 hours. Okay. Um, around July 4th, you're going to do your uh, grub control. And as you can see, this gives you season long control. Um, so this is a good one to use around July 4th. Um, Labor Day is going to be your turf builder here. So this will be the one that you would use around Labor Day. Okay. And this is just, again, it's just a feeding of the turf, feeding of the turf. It's just a natural fertilizer. And then the last one is like a winterizer, something low in nitrogen, which is a 12. 16.8 that the first number is your nitrogen so you want something that's a little bit lower when you're going into the winter time so this would be a good one to use for late fall or when you're doing a seeding at the same time okay so you might say well i don't need any crabgrass control i want to go ahead and seed it with the sunny or shady mix no problem go ahead and seed it and then apply your starter fertilizer at the same time really doesn't matter which one you do before you could do this one before and then do the grass seed or you could do the grass seed and then put this over the top it doesn't really matter Yep. Uh. Yeah, what might have happened, what might have happened, there might have been too much fertilizer in that one concentrated area, and if it's like a clump like that, it could, it could kill the turf. It shouldn't be too much. Yeah, you just want it sporadically throughout the lawn. You don't want any big heavy concentrations of the fertilizer in one area because if it gets warmer, uh, fertilizer releases based on temperature. So it's, it's going to release, but then it might kill it if there's a high concentration of it in one area. You want to just scratch. Yeah, you just want it sporadically throughout the lawn. Correct. Okay. Yep. And then what I did is <clears throat> I just gave you some... Um, seeds per pound so to, to give you an example um, underneath here the annual ryegrass which is in the sunny mix this has a half a million seeds per pound and typically this comes up within five to seven days so typically for grass seed you need two things you need moisture and then you need soil temperature so soil temperature has to be 55 degrees and then you just need to do some light watering so right now with the cooler temperatures let's say you guys were to buy some seed today and put it down you probably wouldn't see anything here for at least maybe 10 days just because of the night temperatures are still relatively colder right now compared to past years. Um, and then on the ryegrass, the, the last three, the ryegrass, the creeping red fescue and bluegrass, these are permanent grasses, which means they come back year after year. Um, the turf type perennial ryegrass has a half a million seeds per pound and the germination time on that is seven to 14 days. Uh, creeping red fescue is typically a, a shade tolerant grass. This has 500 to 600,000 seeds per pound and it has about 10 to 14 days germination on that. Right here, right here. And then the, the last one is the bluegrass. Okay, the, the downside with bluegrass is um, it has a million, uh, 1.3 million seeds per pound, but you can see how long it takes to germinate. 
So that's why we give you a mixture here at Clark Devon so that you have a little bit of everything. So if you had 100% bluegrass, you're gonna have to be waiting three to four weeks for it to germinate. That's why we put a little bit of perennial rye, a little bit of annual rye in there so that you get some stuff that comes up a little bit quicker to keep those seeds in place of the bluegrass until they germinate. Okay, is there any questions on the, um, the fertilizer at all in terms of the schedule? Well, this is the best one to use for like late in the fall or if you're going to do seeding now. Okay. I don't know what your plans are for your lawn, but if you plan on doing some seeding here the next couple weeks, this would be an excellent one to use at the same time when you do your seeding. Okay. Um, this next handout, what I thought I'd do is I'd just go over the mixtures with you to kind of tell you, you know, what they're about. And then on the bottom, just give you some tips here. What's nice about Clark Devon is they have a rental um, <clears throat> program uh, for their equipment. So it's nice, even for me, I rent it and I split it with my neighbor. So I'll go into that a little bit, but we'll go over those in, in a few here. But typically Clark Devon has three mixtures. The first one, the Sunny Mix. Um, I gave you a seeding rate. Typically you want to seed it at like four to six pounds per thousand square feet. And if you're doing like an overseeding, which is an established lawn, you're going to be a little bit less. So you're going to be three to four pounds per thousand. So typically on a sunny mix, obviously it's for sun, but it could take light shade as well. Um, the next one is the shady mix. <clears throat> obviously it's going to be for shaded areas. It could take some light sun. The only thing I wanted to tell you is any grass seed that you, you put down, uh, it still needs two to three hours of sunlight per day. If you have areas on your lawn where you're getting no sun, no turf is going to grow there. So you want to try to incorporate uh, maybe pruning your tree or trying to get some more sunlight on there or maybe just putting some uh, ground covers or mulch if you're having problems growing grass. But typically uh, grass seed needs two to three hours of sunlight per day for it to thrive. Nothing could take 100% shade. Okay. And then the last one is the ryegrass mix. This is a real good one to use if you're doing like overseeding. And what I mean by overseeding is that if you have an established lawn and you're sprinkling it over the top, you're not starting out with bare dirt. The ryegrass is it's a turf type. So when I say it's a turf type, it's fine bladed. So it's attractive to the eye, it's dark in color. So it's a real good one to use for overseeding on an existing lawn, okay? And I gave you the seeding rate on that. Um, <clears throat> the shady mix is kind of similar to the sun. You're going to use four to six pounds per thousand. And on an established lawn, you'll go a little bit less, obviously, because you're not going to need as much seed. You'll be three to four pounds per thousand square feet. And then on the ryegrass, if you're doing a new lawn, you'd be five to seven pounds. And then overseeding, you'd be three to five pounds per thousand square feet on that. Are there any questions on the grass seed? Um, the one thing I wanted to tell you, too, what's nice um, here at Clark Devon, if you buy the grass seed now, and let's say you buy a 10 pound bag and you only use half of it, grass seed's good for a couple years, okay? So in fact, it, uh, typically when they harvest grass seed, it's usually in the fall, so like July or August, and it's tested by an independent lab where it's grown at. It's grown in three states, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. And what happens with the uh, grass seed is it'll actually go up a little bit because some of the moisture will dry out. So you'll see germination go a year, actually go up after it's been a year old. So my whole point of telling you this is let's say you buy a 10 pound bag today or next week, a month from now, and you have some left over for the fall or the following spring. As long as you keep it in a cool, dry area, you'll be fine. It's good for a couple years. The main thing is you don't want to keep it where it gets wet. So it's nothing where you'd have to, you know, if you bought it and you didn't use it after a couple months, you'd have to throw it out. You could still use it this fall or again, use it next spring or even the following fall of, you know, 2019. Okay. So it has a long shelf life. Um, what's nice here at Clark Devon, like I mentioned, is aeration and dethatching. So what I thought I would go over with you real quick is um, some of the machines that they sell here or not sell, they, they run out. And I think you can get it by the four hour or all day, Jay? Uh, three to four hours or 24 hours. Okay, okay. So they have a couple different options, but the whole point of aeration and what this does is, if you look at the back of it, it has cores and it pulls out um, some soil. 
and what you want for fertilizer and grass seed is you want that soil to be loose, okay? So the roots, for it to thrive, you don't want any compaction. So when you see hard compacted areas, you're probably gonna see areas where they have no turf. So this is something that I use once a year because I have a dog, and this helps alleviate any compaction in your soil. So you can go, with this machine here too, you can't over aerate. You can go north and south, east and west, but you wanna try to create as many holes as you can so that you're able to have some nice loose soil for that turf to thrive, okay? Again, they rent it out three to four hours or you can rent it out for 24 hours. I typically split it with my neighbor so then you get three or four people that go in on it and it's something that I'd recommend at least once or twice a year. And not to get too technical, but like you look at some of the sports teams like the Bears, they're aerating probably twice a month. The reason why? You have these big, heavy people that are on their field and they're, you know, practicing and they're relieving that compaction on the soil. So this pulls out the core so that you can get water, oxygen, and fertilizer down to the root of the plant. So again, this is something that I'd recommend um, if you can do at least, like I said, once or twice a year. This is a dethatcher, this red one. And what this does, it just pulls out any dead grass, um, again, so that the existing grass that's in there is able to thrive and get water, um, oxygen, and fertilizer down to the root of the plant. Something, again, you'd probably want to do it at least once or twice a year. Okay? Uh, okay. One thing I wanted to tell you, too, um, I mentioned with the germination is, you know, you'll notice on the tag, it'll have like, um, like on this tag, it has 90% germination. Okay, so what it's telling you is, out of all these seeds that are in there, you know, what did I tell you? There's a half a million seeds per pound on some of these, and some of them are a million. You have 90% germination, okay? So you need two things, soil temperature and then the water. So basically after you seed, I would tell you that you want to just keep the soil moist, okay? And then after it gets established, let's say after mow it twice, there's a misconception with a lot of homeowners in the sense that once you get into the summer months, they're like, oh yeah, we got to water it every day to keep it alive you're actually doing more harm than good. And the reason being is the roots are only gonna go where the water is. So let's say you water every day for like 10 minutes, okay? And the water only gets down a quarter inch. Well, guess what? That's where the roots are gonna go. So what you wanna do is try to spread out your watering so that you go deeper. So maybe do it twice a week, but go for longer periods because the deeper your water goes, that's where your roots are gonna go. So on the second one that I put on here, longer periods of watering to encourage deep root growth. Okay, so you don't want to be watering it every day after you get it established. I put on there, you know, follow the fertilization schedule. Um, number four, I don't know, Jay, do you guys have a slit seeder here? I don't know. If, okay. The, 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 you, you can, you know, when you seed it, you can do a couple different ways. You can, obviously, you can use a spreader. Um, they might have a slit seeder where it actually makes a slit into the soil and it drops the seed into the ground. So when you guys do seed, you want to make sure that that seed only gets into the top quarter inch of the soil. Because if you go too deep, well, guess what? Then after, it, it's not going to have enough room for it to germinate. So when you seed your lawn, you just want to scratch the area and just rough it up a little bit and just keep it in that top quarter inch of the soil. Because if you go too deep, it's not going to have a chance to germinate. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So again, I had a sod farm, this was probably like five years ago, and they usually seed in the fall. And the reason being is that's when the soil temperature is the warmest, okay? Well, what happened was when he was seeding with his machine, the ground was so dry that the seed went in too deep. So when he started watering it, he lost a lot of it because it was, too, it was buried underneath. So you want to make sure that you only put that seed in the top quarter inch of the soil. And what you can do after you seed is you can use like some peat moss, um, some topsoil, starter fertilizer. There's a whole multitude of things that you could use here. But again, you just want to put it in that top quarter inch of the soil. Exactly. And, and there's a couple, you can just hand rake it, you can aerate it, you can dethatch it, but you want to try to work it up a little bit. Without running a machine, I've got a small little area. Sure yeah. A little rake. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Again, when, you, when you're seeding, it's common sense. If it's flat and it's compacted and you throw it on there, well, it's not going to do anything. It's got to get impregnated into the soil. So that's why you got to scratch up the soil a little bit and just get it in that top quarter inch. 
down, kind of mix it in somewhat. Sure. Because you got to actually get a little bit below that. Ex and then a little peat moss on the top. Maybe. Sure. Yeah, they got peat moss. I'm sure you guys have topsoil here. Um, I'm sure you have mushroom compost. You can use any of those amendments just to get a little bit of covering to put over the seed until it germinates. Slit seeder available in the back. Okay, so they do have a slit seeder. So if you wanted to be like a professional, you could use their slit seeder, and that just drops it right into the soil for you. So it's it's a no-brainer. Again, the number five I told you, you know, I told you soil temperature has to be 55 degrees, but the key is you could have the best seed in the world and if it doesn't get any moisture on it, it's not gonna germinate. So again, just uh, common sense, just keep it somewhat moist. What's the best period of spring to do that with the seed? You could do it right now. You know, I mean, it's a little bit colder now, don't get me wrong, but between now and I would say um, Memorial Day. So the next month? Yes, is the good time to do it. Yep, for sure. And then again, you know, any, it's what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. I always recommend like a starter fertilizer like this one to use at the same time as seeding so that you give it some nutrients to give it a little bit of a kickstart to germinate. Um, they also have Melorganite, which is just a um, um, standard fertilizer. It's organic. Um, you can use this any time of the year. You can use this with the seed. You can use it just on your lawn by itself. Um, they also have, you know, besides the ones that I went over with, you know, this being the first step, this is the second one. Here's your grub control, which is the third one. Not to go too fast, but the turf builder would be like around Labor Day. And then this starter fertilizer would be the one that you'd want to use in the fall as your winterizer, like around Thanksgiving or Halloween. But on some of these, um, you could use these. They have these also. It, it's a liquid fertilizer. And some of them have um, just some nutrients in it, and some of them have the weed control. So it depends what you want to use. If you don't want to do like a granular fertilizer, like you mentioned you don't want to have to, you know, you're going to water your lawn and then apply this right after, you could just go out on your lawn and spray it right on there, and this will kill the weeds. But with this, okay, remember, you don't want to put this stuff down, and then like later in the afternoon it starts to rain you want to make sure that it's going to be somewhat dry for about 24 hours so you get the most uh, best rate of application on it because it's a liquid. So you wouldn't want to like put this down and then an hour later it rains. It's going to make this a little bit more ineffective. So you want to make sure that it's dry for about 24 hours after you do it. So they have a whole bunch of different ones that you can use here with the weed killer and um, the crabgrass control too if you want to do like a liquid one. And then they have, you know, just standard ones here where, um, you know, just round up if you have some spots where you have cr uh, grass growing in cracks of a patio or a sidewalk, you know, this stuff will just take it right out. Again, um, I always recommend trying to do this when it's going to be dry for about 24 hours after just to make sure. I know some of these say that you could spray it right away, rainproof in 10 minutes, but I usually like to wait and see that it's 24 hours after. That way I know that you know, it's not going to get diluted down after I spray it on wherever I'm spraying it on. You probably only need to water literally once a week to keep it alive. It's going to go dormant, so it, which means it'll, it'll brown, but usually when you get that moisture in the cooler temperatures, it'll come back. To answer your question, I can't sit here and tell you for sure, yeah, don't water and then you lose your lawn. I would just water once a week and that should give you enough to get it through the summer months. But there's a misconception, like I told you with the homeowners, they, they think more water and every day, like I told you, you're doing more harm than good. The deeper you go with your watering, the deeper your roots are gonna go. The deeper roots are better. And the deeper roots are better, exactly. So when you get in the little summer months and it goes dormant, the roots are still there. They'll come back when you get the moisture. But at the same time, don't water for 10 minutes because the roots will actually come up and now your root system is very shallow and it's weak. You're doing more harm than good. In the sunny and shady mix, there's blue, remember I told you bluegrass, there's like um, pros and cons to everything, okay? Bluegrass takes 21 to 28 days. What happens is when bluegrass uh, germinates, okay, it's called a rhizome, okay, and it forms a daughter plant on its own. So what happens is over time, bluegrass fills in, okay? So when you get into those summer months and you start watering it again, that bluegrass is going to fill in on its own. It's not going to happen right away, but typically like a sod farm, when they're planting seed, they're only seeding 50 pounds to the acre, which is a very minimal amount. But what they do is they're watering it, they're fertilizing it every six weeks. Well, guess what? By the time a year to 18 months is up, that bluegrass is filled in on its own, and now they're selling it to me and you. 
So that's something to keep in mind with the shady and the sunny mix. There's bluegrass in these mixtures, which means it's going to come back year after year and it's going to fill in on its own over time.